let's add a magical advanced block to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found ourselves back in the once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom advanced block to our game over here. And of course, this is going to be quite similar to our advanced item as the custom advanced block will also have a custom block class in this case, right? So it's going to have a custom class associated with it. So let's take a look. In the block package, we're going to right click new package called custom. And inside of there, we'll right click again, new Java class. And this is going to be our magic block over here, simply because I didn't come up with anything more interesting in this case. The block class will extend from the block class, crazily enough, from making sure we choose the right, right one, net micro world level block over here, there we go, press tab to auto complete it. We can then hover over this and create constructor matching super. If the properties over here does not have the correct name, you can simply click on this, press shift F6 and change it to properties. This is related on what version of the parchment mappings you might have or whether or not they're out outdated or something like that. So just keep that in mind, but then you're going to be good to go. Right, and then, well, in theory, once again, this is everything we need for a custom block class, but of course, we want some custom functionality too. For this, we can start typing override, and you can see there's quite a few methods to override over here, which is pretty friggin' crazy, right? So all of them do some sort of functionality, right? They are called and certain things happen. You can see if there's an entity inside, if you attack this block, if, you know, there, there's a tick method, although be careful about the tick method because that doesn't quite work how you would expect it to. And you can see there's quite a few of them. So that is pretty cool and a first real cool step to look at. But the second thing is if you click on the block class and you could press control H, well, then you can see every single vanilla block class that exists out here. And that is probably going to be the best resource that you have for certain things. If you know, okay, I basically want my custom block to behave exactly like block XYZ, then you can just take a look at it right here and simply basically search for something. So for example, I just type magma and you can see here is the magma block. I use that as an example because it's very straightforward, right? So when we step on a magma block, well, it hurts and you can see, oh, there it is, right? So it's basically if the entity is not stepping carefully and the entity is a living entity, then we're simply going to hurt it by saying, hey, this is a damage source of a hot floor. Makes sense for a magma block. And there you go. I'm going to damage it by the amount of one, right? And that is a really cool thing and highly recommended to take a look at the vanilla classes right there. In the case of our magic block, I want two functionalities. I want you be to be able to right click this particular block and it's going to play a sound. And I want you to be able to throw an item on there. And depending on what item it is, I want it to change into a different item. Let's first of all do the right clicking functionality very straightforward. We're going to overwrite the use without item method. You can see it suggests this here to us. Press tab to auto complete it, and it is immediately going to get that method overridden. And then here you want to number one return something. And the thing we want to return is an interaction result of success. This is going to give us a right-clicking animation as well. So the, the basically the, the arm is going to swing when we right-click this particular block. And then we can call P level that play sound. This is going to play a sound and pass in the player. We're going to pass in the position at which this sound is played. This is going to be the position of the block that we've just right-clicked. Then we're going to define the sound event. So we're going to call sound events, and there's going to be the amethyst, I think cluster place is going to be fine. So we're going to call or we're going to basically play that particular sound. The sound source is going to be of blocks. And then we can add a volume and a pitch right here. And there we go. That is already going to simply play that sound. The pitch over here, usually what Minecraft does is it varies the pitch randomly just a little bit so that each of the sounds, if they get called or, you know, get played in a subsequent succession, so to speak, then they're, they don't sound all the same. It's actually a very clever trick to, to do so. And that is not what we're going to do, but I thought that I would just mention that. So the first part over here, it's already done, right? The right-clicking functionality, very straightforward. And the other thing would be throwing an item on here and it changing. How does that work? Well, we're going to, for, for that, we're going to use the step on method. And the way that this is going to work is quite interesting. So when we're inside of the step on method, we know that, okay, this particular entity that is passed in over here as a parameter has just stepped on this particular block. First of all, we need to make sure, well, wait a second, is this entity even an, like an item, right? So we're going to say if p entity instance of item entity, right? So we're going to say if this is an item entity, then we're going to immediately cast it to an item entity as well. So we can, well, further continue using that. And then we want to know, okay, is this item entity 
of a type or is this like a particular item that I actually want to transform. In this case, we're going to say if item entity dot get item dot get item. If that is equal to, let's say mod items dot let's do raw alexandroid dot get, right? If that is the case, then I want to transform it and I'm going to transform it by saying item entity dot set item, making a new item stack for items dot diamond. So we're going to get a diamond and the amount of those are going to be entity item entity dot get item dot get count. So we're going to basically change the entire stack that we throw on there. And there we go. We can do this how often as we want, right? So we're just going to add another if statement over here. I'm going to say, well, if the item isn't raw Alexandrite, but let's say item start, let's do a, do we have like a, oh, that's actually a kind of an interesting, a rabbit. How is a rabbit an item? That's, is that a thing? Oh, well, it would probably be a raw rabbit, I think. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, let's do, sure, a rabbit's foot, right? Why not? And we can change that to a an emerald. Why, you know, what the heck, right? I mean, just be kind of crazy over here, but why not? Do note, by the way, as well, that while you can add more different things, or let's say you can add more item-to-item -item con conversions over here by adding more if statements, anything more complicated than this, for example, saying, Oh, we want like three different items and you going to make sure that they have they are thrown in on a different or, or in the right order and things like that. That is not going to work. That is way too complicated for this particular method. If you want anything like that, right? So anything more complicated, that would probably be done with a custom block entity instead, right? So do keep that in mind. But regardless, that is basically what we want. And I think that that's already going to be pretty freaking cool. And with that, the, the general functionality that's already done, right? So what we can do is we can go into our mod blocks class over here and simply actually register this. So public static final registry object of type block. In this case, again, there's going to be a magic underscore block equal to the register block method. I'm going to call this magic underscore block. And that's going to have as a second parameter, a supplier of a new magic block. Very important that we choose the magic block right here, which is going to have the properties dot of with a strength, let's say like a two. And then we're also going to require the correct tool for drop in this case. And then, well, that's basically the registration done. We can add it to the creative mode tab over here. It's going to be our magic block. And then, of course, all of the assets, we also need those. So let's take a look. First of all, the translation, a fairly straightforward, right? That's just going to be the translation right here. And then when it comes to all of the block states and stuff like that, once again, simply drag an already existing block states JSON file into the same folder while holding control. And we can then simply change the name as well as changing the contents over here. And that should be fine. Do note on the item model JSON file that you're actually dragging in an, a block model like a, an item model JSON file for a block, right? Otherwise, you're gonna run into some issues. But there you go, and then we can add the trans, uh, the rather the texture. Actually, there you go, and that is it. Those are all of the steps for this case as an example. Obviously, if you want any other functionality, you know that's basically where you're asked to, you know, take some of your Java knowledge, take some of the knowledge from, you know, vanilla or maybe GitHub's from other different uh, mods to combine all of that together and then see if you can find and, you know, you know, do some cool functionality. Once again, a really super complicated advanced block that would probably fall into a block entity, which is going to be, you know, like a furnace type thing with a custom GUI and things like that. That is going to be done in a way later tutorial. But for the time being, this is going to be our magic block. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. Oh, I found it back in Minecraft. As you can see, the magic block has been successfully added to the game. If I right click it, let's just pull this up a little bit over here. There we go. Okay, we can definitely hear that. So the right clicking functionality absolutely works. And if I were to get some, uh, so what was it? It was a, it was a rabbit's foot, right? And we also had as a, another one, the raw Alexandrite. And for the sake of argument, let's also get just some redstone to see, well, when it's not going to work, right? But with a rabbit's foot, well, it's going to turn into a freaking emerald. How cool is this? And of course, raw Alexandrite turns into a freaking diamond. So yes, we basically now have unlimited emeralds and unlimited diamonds. So obviously, this is not really a good like use for a block, but it is pretty cool and a great illustration for a custom advanced block added to Minecraft. Freaking awesome. As I said, any more complicated functionality right, is obviously going to require some amount of Java knowledge as well as just some knowledge on how things work. Best places looking at the blocks from vanilla or also blocks from other mods. 
But that is going to be it. As always, of course, all of the code is available down below in the GitHub repository. So there you go. So no worries there at all. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about food and fuel. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.